Hello, crafty friends. So I'm letting you in on a little secret with this video. It's probably not a secret anymore, but at the time that I am videotaping this, it's a secret because at the time I'm videotaping this, we have not had the Sizzix Chapter 2 release yet. And so these dies have not been introduced by Tim. So I have already sent off my Chapter 2 assignments. The problem is when I sent off the Chapter 2 assignments, the last one that I did, I did when I was having that horrible, horrible toothache and I couldn't really think very well. And so the last project used these, I think they're called Funky Insects. I'm not exactly sure yet because these are all still so new and I haven't learned the names yet. But I used the insects on the card and it's an okay card. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I just wasn't incredibly happy with it. And so after I sent everything off and I got my tooth taken care of and I was feeling better, I saw a video by, of course, the wonderful Jennifer McGuire. She is so incredibly inspiring and I always love her ideas. Well, she had this idea for a card where you open it up and then uh, there's a, a, a portion inside that slides up when you open the card. And I thought it was really, really cute. Such adorable cards. And as I was watching it, these dies came to mind. And I thought, I wonder if I can use that card type with these dies and get the bug to kind of come up out of the flower field. And so my mind kind of started working. So I want to give it a try. Now, what I did is I went back in my archives and I got my stacked deckel dies out because I'm going to use these because you need a window. And then what she did, I made, this is my horrific prototype, but this kind of helps me figure out what I need to do so I don't waste too much of my really good card stock or heavy stock. So what she did was she cut a window and then she had some things on the front of the card. And I thought, all right, so the flower field and the window. And then when you open it up, there's a piece that's attached. And then as you open it, it pulls that piece and it comes up. See that? So there's the little bug there. Now, what I learned from this is how much I need to uh, score this at so that it pulls it up and also how high this needs to go in order for the bug to be able to come up, but the bottom not to kind of come out of here. So those are all things I had to think through as I was working on this prototype with these particular dies. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to invite you to join me as I practice this and see if this is going to be something that I can finish up in time to send to Tim as a surprise for the Sizzix Chapter 2 release on Saturday. So let's get started. To begin, I need to color my cardstock that is going to be my card base, so my card front and the inside, and then, and it's, I have some ink on here, it's okay, it really won't matter. And then I also am going to color this piece because this is gonna be the piece that I'm gonna cut that will eventually pull up. So I'm gonna need to cut it thinner and I'm gonna need to cut it shorter, but let's just get them both colored for right now so that we can move on and I will probably use this as the front because I can cut the window out and then nobody will even see that. I am going to use a little bit for for this, I'm gonna use some Distress Oxide Spray and also some tumbled Glass Spray Stain for these and we'll just see, see what it looks like. I'm kind of going for a sky look, I think that's what I want. So I'm gonna get it a little bit wet and just see how this goes. I really should be using a splat box because I get this everywhere. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know how Tim does it and not get it all over everything because I totally do. because I saw him do this once. So I'm just gonna do that. 
It looked really cool when he did it. Oh, yeah, you know what? That's good enough. That's like sky, right? Okay, let's dry it. Then I might go in and pick up a little of that and make some splotches. But I really just want color, just kind of sky color that doesn't distract. Uh, in case you were wondering, I used Stormy Sky Oxide Spray. I used Tumbled Glass Oxide Spray and I used Tumbled Glass. Whoops, I started shaking. Uh, tumbled Glass Distress Spray Stain were the two I used. And again, this is not artwork. I want just color on here that's not going to take the attention away from the dyes. I want the dyes to be the focal point. That's the purpose of this make. Okay, I'm gonna keep drying this. You don't need to watch me dry it. And when I come back, I will cut the window out of this and I'm gonna get this cut and scored so that it fits inside here. And then we will color for the, let's see, the, the flowers. Yeah, we'll get started on that. All right, so I cut the window with my, I, it was the middle of the stack duckle dies. And so I cut the window with that. So we have our card base ready to go. And then what I did was I cut a piece of that second piece of uh, paper that we colored, the se second piece of heavy stock. I cut it at about, oh, I think it was seven by, this is about one, two, about three and a quarter. And this is what's going to go inside and be the slider. I went ahead and scored it at three quarters of an inch because if I if I scored it an inch, it was going to be too close to this window and it might kind of peek down when I closed it. So I did three quarters of an inch. And then what I will do is I'm going to attach it, just the flap, and I'll attach it centered on the card like this and then it will move up and down when I open and close it. So I'm going to do that and then with some of the leftovers what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to make kind of a guide right here. It doesn't go exactly next to it but I do have to do a guide but I'm going to wait and put the guides on until after I get the flower fields cut and colored. For this so. next step, I have another piece of Distress White Heavy Stock that I'm going to be using. I've cut it at four and a quarter by 11. And now I want to color it a little bit because what I'm going to do to maybe give some detail, I think, this is my idea. We'll see if this is what I end up doing. But I thought I would start with coloring a little light green and then maybe go in and add some punches of color with my watercolor brush and maybe some darker greens here and there. That's my thought and so uh, that's what I'm gonna go with and I'm gonna try and keep the back sides of these as white as possible I think is where I'm gonna go with that. Let's just see. See what ends up happening because I'm not sure how that's gonna look if I open this card and I mean, maybe I want it green on the back too, right? If I open the card, yeah, maybe I should do the back. Okay, I'm completely almost out of shabby shutters. I'm gonna have to just sprinkle some on, I think. I need to go buy some more. Goodness gracious. Okay. And a little bit of bundled sage. I think this might end up being a little darker than I was anticipating. So let's get some water in there. We'll do this again. Let's see how that looks. All right, we're getting there. And while we're at it, I'm just going to do the front and the back. And then... Let's get some of that in there. I'll just use my finger. This is why I don't get manicures. So you'll notice that I don't have beautiful fingernails like so many YouTubers. I am 
so impressed with their beautiful nails, but I like to get my hands in there and get myself all inky. And also, I got a manicure when I went to Walt Disney World, and then I could not finish a card before I left. It was terrible. I just could not function. So, all right. I've got all kinds of print on that. So let's dry it. This is so not the way you're supposed to do this, but I really, I just don't care because I just want green on there. I just want to get some green on there. I hope I'm not driving you crazy with my stream of conscious crafting, but this is kind of a different type of YouTube video. So I figure, hey, you can see it for what it is over here in the Plays Well with Paper Craft Studio. Even with all those little, you know, they th that kind of looks like veins, you know, that you get on leaves. So that's great too. I like it. In fact, I'm going to get some more on there. It's great. I'm just going to mop it all up. And I'm going to dry this. And when we come back, I will cut out, I will have several of these wildflowers cut out and we will do a little bit of water coloring. So that I've got my cutting all done and this is kind of where we're going. So we're going to have one on the front and then when you open it up, uh, so it'll be fairly see-through, you will be able to see what's going on a little bit inside. And then we'll have that reveal where we will have this kind of pulling up from and we needed a little bit more so the interesting thing about this die is that it doesn't have a blade across the bottom so when you cut you can actually make this part longer and what that may allow me to do is use that for when I open this uh, to keep it you know, hidden behind here so it doesn't pop out. And that may be about as much as I need. So we'll see once I get kind of putting this together. And then I have this just in case I needed it for maybe just a little, a little spot on here um, that would kind of come up even more. So I just, this is kind of extra, it's redundant but I wanted to be sure that I had enough cut. I've set up to do my water coloring. I have quite a few of the colors of Distress. These are uh, the mini Distress inks that I'm gonna watercolor over this, which is why I only use Distress Stain on this and not the oxide. I didn't want the uh, oxide factor to factor in to this. I just wanted the, the ink color. So I'm going to kind of zoom in here and we'll probably lose some of this, but I'm really not sure where I'm going with this. So let's start with purple since I know that's definitely what I want on this one. I'm just going to go in. This is milled lavender and this is dusty Concord. I think Might be the better way to go, yeah. I'm trying to go around this one so that I can use another color on it. Yeah, I like that. So I really like that you can see a little bit of the green still coming through. I'm gonna go ahead and dry it. So it doesn't just keep wicking. And I like that. That's why I wanted the green base because see, you can see the green showing through that purple and I really like that. We'll go with that. And I kind of feel like I'm gonna add a little bit of this wilted violet oh 
no, it's seedless preserves, sorry. To the tips of this, I kind of feel like it's a some sort of thistle or something. I don't know why I feel that way. So, uh, yeah, I have a couple more flowers to go and then I'm going to work in here with some of the greens and just kind of model them together and then I'll be back. So I have my card base and then I have the slider portion. I have colored two pieces and I have the third one just in case something happens. But as I was putting this on here, I'm going to have to flatten these out and so I'm probably going to call it a night at this point and finish this up tomorrow. But th Hello today crafty friends. So I let this sit overnight under some uh, actually some large dies that I had to press them down and make sure that they were nice and flat. So these are nice and flat today and I left off with the fact that I was looking at, even with these being flat, I am concerned that if I put them like this, which I was planning, that these are going to somehow kind of maybe stick together a little bit. And so I wanted something in between them to keep them from getting caught up together. And so I have decided to use another tip from Jennifer McGuire, and that was that on some of her window cards, she will put in a little bit of this twill, right? Uh, tool, sorry, some of this tool. And so I am gonna do that, but I was still a little bit concerned that uh, some of the little bits might get caught. See how that's getting caught in, in the tool. So this is what I'm doing. I have a whole box of these overhead projector sheets and so I think I'm going to put a piece of the tool on the overhead projector then I'm going to attach it to this little frame that I cut and once it's adhered to that I'm going to trim around it so that it's flush and then I'll adhere it to the card this way. And then that will give me still my see-through. I'll have that little texture from the netting. And then I will have my flowers on front, on the front and they should not get caught up with each other or with the netting. So that's the plan for the next step. I adhered the transparency to the frame and then I adhered the tool to the transparency and I did uh, both of those steps with collage distress distress collage medium and what I did was I just went ahead and put a smattering of the collage medium around the outside of the frame but on the transparency and then I just pressed this tool into the collage medium and I just left it here to dry and then I came back to it and so it's nice and dry and you can see that this is stuck on there so I am going to go through and I'm going to go ahead and just trim it up against the edge because I don't need it hanging over and then I'll go ahead and adhere this to the inside of my card and then I'm going to do some stitching because I like the way it looks on my cards when I have stitching so before I add any of the flowers or anything like that, I'm going to, there we go. All right, so we're ready to go. So this is going to be adhered inside of the frame. Hi, Leota. So Leota's in here working with me. She's supervising. So it's gonna go here. Now you can see that there's a little bit of uh, collage medium that got out there. You're not gonna be able to see that because of course there's gonna be flowers over it so you won't. You won't even notice it. But I like that just little bit of texture that that netting gives to the front of the card. And I think I'm gonna be happy with how that gives the flower something to adhere to as well. And keeping them from getting intertwined with the one beneath. All right, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'm gonna give it a try. I know there's a big glare right here, but that's from the machine light. 
and uh, I don't know how to turn it off if I have the machine on. So it just comes on when you turn on your machine. Uh, each sewing machine usually has a light if you aren't used to sewing. Those of you that sew already know this. Now I have the machine threaded. So I have it threaded through the needle and then I have it threaded through the bobbin. And so I want to pr you know, practice my stitch before I actually sew on the paper. So I always recommend when you are starting this, I never just immediately start sewing on my card. When I get my machine set up, I always like to practice on something that is similar in weight. This is only one ply, but at least it'll give us a feeling. And I also get that bobbin and the uh, needle thread going together. And so as you can see, when I look at it, I can see that this, the stitching is pretty straight. Uh, the back is is fine. Um, so this is the, the beginning thread that just kind of got woven in. It's all fine. So that's going to be perfect. And then I will switch sometimes from a straight stitch into a zigzag. And each machine is different. So, uh, you know, you, you'll have to figure that out on your uh, sewing machine if you are just beginning with sewing. And let me see if I can back this up a little bit without moving too much. So this is my paper sewing machine. This is a brother that I got at Walmart for like 50 or $60. It has all of the controls that I basically need, all the different types of stitches, which is really all I use is zigzag and then straight stitching. That's all I use and it's really all I need. So let me see if I can get this back down here and sew for you so you can see me sewing on paper in case you haven't done that before. And I'm only doing this so that those of you who haven't stitched on paper before can see that it's much like kind of driving, I think, is how I would describe it. So let's see how do I want to do this. I'm going to do it this way because what I like to do is have... I like to have the edge of whatever I am sewing so that I can have it on like a line that I'm following. You can see that there are different lines for different widths all along here. And I have drawn on my foot where I generally like the edge of my cards and things to be. And then this is the center, so this is where it's going to stitch. So usually it's going to be about that far in. Sometimes I have it in a little closer, but that'll get us started. And I usually start, I'm gonna start down here because then it will be covered up by the flowers, but you can kind of see how the edge of my window is on that line. And then you go ahead and press on the pedal just like you are going with gas in the car. And mine's slipping around on the carpet here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit beyond. You want to leave the needle in, and then there's this little lever here that lifts the foot up, and I'm gonna turn it. I don't know how many degrees that is, math people. It's, I don't know. All right, and then we're gonna go along the edge. Okay, lift the foot up, turn it. Go along the edge, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes I don't even go in a straight line. Sometimes I just go all cattywampus, kind of crazy. And sometimes I'll go, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now, this is going to be a little difficult because, I'll show you here, we have the back of the card. So I'm going to gently fold the back of the card in like this, and I don't want it to get sewn on. So let's put that lever down. And then sew through. I need one more. Okay. And then we want to meet up. So I want to meet up with this. And sometimes if it's showing, you want it to be as close to perfect as you can. And so usually I'll get my head down there to see 
but today it kind of really doesn't matter because it's going to be covered with the flowers. All right, so I've met up from where I started to where I ended. I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to pull it out and you have to gently, sometimes there's a little knob on the end of your machine that will loosen the feed things and it will allow you to pull this out. You want to have a nice amount out here. Otherwise, it the needle and threads itself when it when the it goes up to start the next stitch. So you want to make sure that you have enough left over. All right, I'm gonna show you uh, what I do to hide the threads on the front after I sew around the outside. So let me sew around the, oh, no, I'll just do it right now, hang on. Okay, so here's what I do. I wanna pull these threads through to the back. So let's see if I can get it over in the center here. I'll push this back so that you can see. So I'm gonna turn this over and you'll see that the other two threads are here on the back side. So I'm gonna gently pull these and you can see that some of the threads start coming through. So I just keep pulling and pulling and pulling. And what that's doing is it pulled the threads from the front to the back and then they can be hidden. Now, if this was on something that was going to be glued down, uh, say to the front of a card and you weren't going to see this, I would just take these, I would put them to the side this way and I would put some collage medium, let them dry and then I would trim them. Even though they're gonna be seen, you know what? I think that's what I'm gonna to do today too because I don't wanna have a knot. So I'm just going to put a little collage medium and I'm gonna put it in the direction. Sometimes I will knot it and then I will trim it off, but I find that if you don't use a knot and you just kind of do that, it blends in and nobody's gonna notice. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for just a second before we go uh, back to the front and sew around the outside. Here we are ready to sew around the outside now. And you can see that I have it on that same line that I generally use. And I'm gonna get started. And then on this one, you want to go almost up to it before you turn. And this bottom stitch here will probably be covered. But to the sides. I'm using the fold line as my edge because it really will be. What you can do sometimes, and look, see, I got this really, that is really close there. Uh, there's, it should be much longer like this one. What I sometimes do and what many other people do is that they leave a lot of the threads hanging when they sew. And I, I'm feeling like I want the outside of this card to be a little bit more organic and messy. Uh, so I think I'm just going to go around it a couple of times with a straight stitch that is not exactly perfect. And then we'll go and we'll do some zigzagging so you can see both of those, all right? So let's just kind of, and you can see I'm just kind of moving it a little bit because I don't exactly want it completely perfect on this one. I like to decide where I'm gonna do the zigzag and I feel like I want some across the top here. 
So the zigzag, I like to try and kind of center on that center line. You're not gonna follow this line because that's on the edge, but you're zigzagging. I kind of like it to sometimes be over my stitching. So I'm just gonna put it there and just do a little zigzagging and then you can hit the reverse button. Go back and add just a little messy stitching there. And then loosen the feeds if you need to. Let's put a little stitching. I think I'm gonna go all the way down to where we started on this one, maybe. Now that'll be covered up, so let's go up here a little bit. And you can see that one's just a tiny, tiny bit. some stuff hanging out and I think I want some threads hanging out the bottom maybe so I'm gonna go ahead and all right now let me turn this off and move this a little bit so as you can see I'm gonna do it this way there are threads everywhere and I don't think I want them to be on the inside. So if I want it to be even messier on the outside, I, a lot of times I will do that. what I did before where I told you where I'll pull on one of the threads and then that gives me that little bit of a loop that I can kind of keep picking at and pulling. And eventually I usually can get both of the threads through to the front side. And then what I'll do is I'll just kind of trim them off a little bit. This one's gonna be stubborn. There. And I'm not gentle with it because I want it to look messy. So, and then you can just, some people leave them really long. I don't tend to usually leave them very long. I just like a little bit of fringe. like that. And then I'll do the same to all of these. And when I'm done, I shouldn't have any on the inside, except just the flat stitching. And then I have little bits of fringe on the outside. And when we come back, we'll start putting the sliding mechanism and get the pockets done. I thought I was finished with the sewing machine, but I realized that what I probably will want to do is that along the bottom there's going to be an unfinished edge from the dies and I think on the inside and outside I might want to cover just that little bit of the bottom of the flower die with something that maybe mimics grass or something like that and since I used the decal the stacked decal dies to make my window I thought I would get out my decal cutter from Tim Holtz and Tonic and I'm using the leftover piece of green from when I die cut the uh, my flower field and so I'm gonna cut a couple of different the width is fine because this is four and a quarter so it will go all the way across so I'm just gonna cut a couple of pieces at a half an inch and then an inch or so and then Maybe let's go three quarters of an inch. I have my strips here, and so let's go ahead and get some sewing on these so that we have a little bit of kind of grass-like texture. So I'm gonna go back and forth with a straight stitch. And again, not very straight, mind you. And actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and go off and turn it around and go back across. do this for snow also, but not quite as messy. All right, and I think I want to go ahead and do some zigzagging. So let me change the setting. 
So very messy, just a bunch of stitching on there just to give it some texture. And then I will ink the edges and put this probably across, let me see if I can pull one up. So it would go across the bottom, something like this. We wanna put the slider action in. So at this point I have this piece that I think was three and a quarter by about oh, seven and I have scored it at three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to put some of my Distress Collage Medium on the flap. And then I'm going to put it on the this portion of the upper window. And I want to make sure it's in the center, between, equal distance between the sides, as well as close to that window, but not over it. because when it closes, I don't want to see this fold. So see, when I close it, you can't see the fold. That's what we want. And I'm going to make sure I've got really good contact by using a bone folder and pressing that down all the way across. And then I'm going to let that sit and dry, but before it's completely dry, I want to make sure that it's centered down here as well. So let's make sure we've got that even all the way down. Now that the flap is in place and it's stuck pretty well, you can see that it opens and closes and it moves that flap. But when you close it, the flap is way down here and we can't use all of that. So we're going to end up cutting it where the card ends. Uh, before we do that, though, I wanted to make sure that I made the pocket to hold it long enough so that it didn't keep popping out. And uh, I'm glad I did that because I was going to use this piece on the inside, but that isn't anywhere close to as deep as I need the pocket because if you look behind it, it's going to come up to here once I cut it off. So what I did was when it was closed, I went ahead and used a pencil, made the line so that I could tell where it went. And then what I'm going to do is with uh, the leftover piece that I cut some of those, uh, the strips off of that we're going to use for, uh, for the front, I'm going to be putting the, it just above where that comes to so it's kind of like some you know grass or a green field in the distance or something like that but before I do that I need to put that guide on that I was talking about at the very beginning so I can see that I need the guide to come up to at least there and this is I think this is a wide quarter inch okay I'm going to put it alongside of it, but not right exactly next to it. I mean, there is just, just a little space in between there, you can see. Just the littlest bit of space. I'm going to trim this off so I can do the other side.
trim enough. So there are our guides. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue this on so that it hits just above there. But here's the thing, we still want this to be a pocket. So we're not going to glue along the bottom at all. And we're not going to glue over this area. We're go you can put glue on the guides and you can put, you definitely want glue on the very outside here. So let's go ahead and put it directly on the card because we definitely don't want it to get onto our slider part. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and use my finger and I'm going to push this out so that it doesn't have any chance of going into where the slider is. And I want to edge this a little bit with some walnut ink. And then I'm going to go ahead and line it up just above there. get good connection. I'm going to turn it over and trim that off. that and I'm holding it open so that I don't cut this. I'm going to go ahead and trim this off and let's cross our fingers and hope I got it right. Oh man. All right, I'm going to cover that so let's not freak out. I'm kind of freaking out, but let's not. All right, there's a little bit, when I get that completely closed, you can see there's a little bit sticking out there. So, okay. Again, not freaking out. All right. Now, we open it. Yep, it stays. Okay, there we go. Great. All right, I don't want to decorate this yet because I need to put, I'm going to put... A sentiment here and I'm going to put those um, I'm going to put some insects in here before I go ahead and decorate it but I wanted to show you what I ended up doing so I used that second uh, you know I had a, a third piece so I'm going to go ahead and put this on the front but then I had a third one of these and so I ended up coloring and cutting them apart because what I found was when I had this in here, that when I closed it, this was hitting this tall part here. So I cut it and put the tall parts. I'm going to put these out here like this. And then I can actually attach that there. And it'll be fine. So it's And it doesn't get stuck. And even if I didn't attach it there, see how it's not sticking to it. So that will work. And then I did the same thing on this side. And I'll just overlap them a little bit. And that way we can open and close. And those aren't going to hit the top of the card. And that part that I was freaking out about, I will ink it. It's not going to show because see I'm covering it with these down here. And then I'll, I will also put this across it so we won't see it. Everything will be okay. I don't need to panic. It's all right. So let's go ahead and do that. Now Now that I'm looking, it actually kind of looks a little bit like a hedge. I probably could have done it like brickwork. That would have been cool too. Now that I'm thinking of it. But that's okay. Let's get going on the rest of this. So I'm going to color the bugs. And you don't need to watch me do that. I do it just the way that I did the, the watercolor flowers. And... I think we might be able to finish up in the next step. I apologize. I went to color the insects and 
The next thing I knew, I was just caught up in creating and I finished the card and forgot to uh, record any of it. So let me just recap very quickly what I did on the card. On the front, I went ahead and put the entire piece of flower fields with one of those little sewn strips that I used. And that's really all I wanted to do. I didn't want to have anything else because it is fairly busy with all the flowers. It's just kind of a rush of flowers as you look at it. And so I didn't want to have anything else competing. Then when you open it up, there's our little surprise. The little insect pops up out of the flower fields for us to enjoy. Now you'll notice that these flowers look a little bit different than the ones on the front. And that's because this piece was getting stuck when I would uh, open and close this. It was getting stuck here in the center. So I took two, as I explained, I took two pieces, I cut them apart, and then I put the long flower along each side and I had the meat in the middle on that piece of green deckel cut that I used for the pocket. And then at the bottom, again, I used one of the strips and I used a sentiment from the new Ideology Metallic Sticker Book. I did want to remind you, in order for this to be able to smoothly open and close so that that little bee pops out, you do need to make sure that you don't glue it at the bottom. It's only adhered on the very edges here so that it can freely move in and out. And that's all there is to this card. I hope this tutorial was helpful, even though I know it was a little uh, chaotic at some points as I was trying to figure out what I was doing to make this card. And I am so thankful that Jennifer McGuire posted the tutorial on this. I'm going to put the link to that video in the description for this video so that you can see the professional uh, version of this tutorial. And also you can see her absolutely adorable cards that she made with this technique. So thank you for following along.